Hello, dear TET and DSC candidates. Welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to teach you about the second part of omission of articles. This grammatical aspect is going to be very, very helpful and useful for your TET and DSC examination. Therefore, I request all of you to watch this video till the end without skipping it in the middle. I also request all of you to consider subscribing to my channel and also sharing this video with all your near and dear ones. Thank you so much and now let's get into the video. In this video, this is the first rule, right? And this video is in continuation with the earlier part 1 video, okay? This is the part 2 video. In the first video and in the second video, I have discussed only the most important uh, rules regarding omission of articles and therefore, uh, you must please pay attention to these two parts and they are going to be very, very useful and helpful for you in your examination. And this one is going to be the most important one, right? What is that uh, important rule? The nouns. What are the nouns? School, college, church, prison, hospital, bed and market. These are the special nouns and if at all, they are visited in their own purpose they take no articles okay if they are visited in their own purpose you know what are the purposes of these places school is there what is the purpose you go to school for study to college for study church for prayer prison to undergo punishment and hospital for uh, to undergo treatment bed to sleep market to buy something so they are, these are the own purposes of these places if at all you happen to visit these places in their own purpose says then you should not use any article okay how let me give you some examples to make you understand this one david goes to the church every sunday here david david means is a christian uh, by name you can understand that is a christian and every sunday going to church why, why is he going to church every sunday only for prayer in such a case that means he is visiting this church in church purpose only for prayer only what is the purpose of the church for prayer to pray to God, okay, that's the purpose of the church. So, he is visiting this church in church purpose only and therefore you should not use any article before that. Then you have to simply say, David goes to church every Sunday, right? And similarly, other examples are also given here. The injured were rushed to the hospital. So, the injured, okay, the wounded, okay, the injured were generally where are they taken to? They are rushed to the hospital. So, for the injured, this is only the place. You are taking them to this place, uh, uh, to this hospital, because you are using this hospital in its own sense and therefore, uh, you, are, you should not use in uh, article before that. And here you see that you must say, the injured were rushed to hospital. This itself is enough. Of course, you may not find this. This is a very, very important rule, okay, from your uh, TET, DSC and other competitive examinations. And that's please pay a very good attention to this one more example is given here the criminal was sent to the prison so the criminal so where are the criminals sent to the criminals are sent to only prison that means you are using prison in the in its own purpose okay you are visiting okay this prison in its own purpose then you should not use any article before that so the criminal was sent to prison that itself is enough one more example is given here Sheila is going to the college so Sheila is going to the college you cannot say the college because um, you are going to college why to study okay okay you are going to college to study you are going to school to study okay so then when that is the case you have to simply say Sheila is going to college that itself is enough so in this way before these uh, nouns uh, when they are visited in their own purpose you should not use any article okay right and one exception is also there for this let us see that exception okay now let's move on to the next slide one exception is there to this rule what is that they can be used only when these places are visited in general purpose whenever these places are visited in general purpose then you can use the definite article before them if at all you happen to visit these places in their own purpose you should not use any article if at all you just visit them uh, in general purpose then you can use the definite article before that so here that is in that in general purpose mean that is when we speak of them as mere buildings school means 
it's your uh, school means school building college means college building hospital means hospital building prison means prison building when you are talking just uh, as mere buildings and places then you have to you can use the definite article so here you see gopal went to the college to pay the fee of his son so gopal is not going to college for study sake why is he going to college to pay the fee of his son that's why he is visiting this place not in the sense of this college itself not in the sense of this college not in the purpose of this college what is the purpose of this college for study or to study so he is not visiting this college uh, in in its own purpose but he is visiting it in general purpose and therefore this the can be used there he is going there to pay the fee of his son not to for study he is going to college right and here one more example the school is very near to simply you are talking about the mere building of the school so the school is very near my house okay and here you see he went to the church to see the christmas decorations so he went to this church not for prayer sake the purpose of the church is to pray to god but he is not going to church to pray to god but only to see the christmas decorations and that's why he is visiting this church in general purpose then you can use this definite article and i met him at the church so here church is again used in a general sense and therefore this the can be used there and here the bed is made dirty the bed is made dirty okay here the bed is there it is made dirty okay here uh, you are sim you are simply talking about this bed you are not uh, going to bed this to sleep okay you are just uh, talking about this bed okay and uh, here the bed is made dirty it's okay and one more example i went to the hospital to see my uncle you are you are i went to the hospital not in the uh, in hospital purpose what is the purpose of this hospital treatment to get treatment to undergo treatment i am not going to this hospital to get treatment but to see my uncle so the purpose is different then it i am talking about this hospital in a general sense then i can use this definite article so in this way in all these examples you understand that you can use the definite article before the the nouns school college church prison or hospital bed market these are the uh, special nouns keep these nouns in your mind whenever they are visited in their own purpose you should not use any article before them but whenever you happen to visit them in general purpose okay then you can use the definite article this point only you have learnt in the first and second slides in these two slides okay now let's move on to learn other things number 2 before the names of single lakes ponds and bays okay lakes all of you know very well ponds also means lakes okay bays also you know very well so before the sing names of single lakes ponds and base you should not use any article okay and uh, uh, this is a direct rule and you don't have any confusion in understanding this uh, pulicot lake it is in ap so it's a, it's the name of sardar sarovar lake it is in gujarat so i have mentioned some lake L loktak lake manipur pangong lake ladakh okay ash pond okay dew pond mill pond these are all there ash pond dew pond these are all ponds these are lakes and here bays are hudson bay santa cruz bay so these are the bays okay i have given the examples uh, for these uh, single lakes um, ponds and bays okay and you should not use any article before that san francisco bay is also there okay the pulicat lake is in andhra pradesh you cannot say, you cannot say this is this is the name of a single lake so you should not use any article before that you have to simply say pulicat lake is in andhra pradesh one more example the hudson bay is in canada you cannot see, say because the name before the names of bays you should not use the definite article so you cannot say the hudson bay okay what should you say then hudson bay itself is enough is in canada so in this way before the names of uh, uh, single lakes uh, ponds and bays we should not use any article right and uh, now let's move on to learn the next thing exception is there to this rule what is that if the name of the bay is preceded by the what word bay then you can use the definite article okay bay is there for example bay of bengal is there okay hudson is there hudson bay is there. hudson bay hudson is the name of that bay bay again used here hudson bay if if the name is like this you should not use any article okay for example but if that name of the bay is preceded by the word bay for example bay of bengal 
Bengal is the name of that uh, uh, bay. So here bay is, uh, you know, um, Bengal is preceded by the word bay. Hudson is followed by the word bay. When, it, when bay is followed by the name of the bay, you should not use any article. But whenever the word bay is preceded by this uh, uh, name of the bay, you can use the definite article. The Bay of Bengal is right. So therefore, if the name of the bay is uh, preceded by the word bay, that means if the name, if these used before, if the word bay is used before the name of that bay, you can use that. For example, uh, the bay of Biscay. Biscay is the name of that bay and again the bay is used there, then you can use it. Okay. The bay of Bar Barakoa. Okay. So here it is okay. And similarly, the bay of Izmir. Okay. It's okay. The bay of Fundy. Okay. Here it is okay. And here uh, the bay of Bengal. Here it is okay. Here you see Hudson Bay. The, the word bay is used after the name of the bay, but here the word bay is used before the name of the bay. If the word bay is used before the name of that bay, you can use the definite article. But if it is used after the name of the bay, you should not use any article. Please keep this small difference in your mind. And uh, uh, English is that's why called a tricky language. It's like a two-edged knife. Okay, and the rule, rules will be uh, changing uh, very frequently. It, they will not be constant uh, always. Okay, right. And uh, I'll give you some examples uh, to make understand this. Bay of Bengal separates India from Myanmar. Okay, so you cannot simply say Bay of Bengal. Then what should you say? The Bay of Bengal separates India from Myanmar. And here, Bay of Biscay is located on the western coast of Atlantic Ocean of Europe. So you cannot say the Bay of Biscay. Okay, in this way. So before the names of bays, okay. You should not use the definite article. If at all, if the name of that, uh, uh, what is that, uh, uh, bay is uh, followed by the word bay, okay. If it is preceded by the uh, word bay, then you can use. If it is followed by the bay, it should not use. If it is preceded by the uh, word bay, then you can use. So, this small difference is there. And now, let us move on to learn other things. Third one, before the names of waterfalls, you should not use any uh, article before the names of waterfalls. And first of all, I would like to give you the names of examples of waterfalls, Niagara Falls. You can also call them the falls. Niagara Falls has another name that is special name is the falls. If anybody says, you know, talks about the falls, the falls means uh, they are nothing but uh, Niagara Falls. Okay, right. And the uh, Jog Falls that is in uh, Karnataka, India, and here and uh, Victoria Falls, Zambia, and here uh, Sutherland Falls, New Zealand, and here uh, Angel Falls, Venezuela. Okay, these are there. So before the names of waterfalls, you should not use any article. So some examples are given here in the examination. It will be given like this. We have very recently visited the Niagara Falls. You cannot say the Niagara Falls because the Niagara Falls is the is a waterfall. So you cannot say that. Okay, we have very recently visited Niagara Falls, or simply the falls is also okay. Please keep this point in your mind. And uh, people throng the Victoria Falls in summer. You cannot say it's the name of the waterfall before that. You should not use any article. What should you say then? People throng Victoria Falls in summer. That itself is enough. Okay, in this way, before the names of waterfalls, we should not use any article. Right now, let's move on to learn other things. Fourth one before the abstract nouns. Uncountable nouns, abstract nouns are nothing but uncountable nouns, okay, when used in a general or wider sense. This is going to be again a very important rule, okay, before the, uh, before the abstract nouns, abstract nouns means what? The names of things which you cannot see with your naked eyes, but you can only think of, they do not have physical existence, they are called uh, abstract nouns. For example, joy is there, can you see this joy? You can only see with your mental eye, not with your naked eye, real eye. Okay, you can only think of. Okay, and here, what is it? Sorrow is there. Can you see this with your naked eyes? If that person is weeping and all tears, then you say, oh, he is in sorrow. You only you understand from the situation, you understand that he is in sorrow. But you, you cannot say, sorrow is like this. Can you say that? Does it have any physical existence? No. And that's why sorrow is there. Poverty is there. Can you see this poverty with your naked eyes? You cannot because you understand. No, he has uh, he is wearing all tattered clothes, and then you say, Oh, he is in poverty. 
Okay, so you only understand, you cannot see with your naked eyes, but only you understand with your, men, you can see with your mental eye and moreover, you can only visualize that. Okay, that is there. Such nouns are called abstract nouns. Whenever these abstract nouns are used in a general or wider sense, you should not use any article before them. That's the point. So, some examples are given here. The wisdom is the gift of heaven. Wisdom. Can you see wisdom? Wisdom means that we get by birth and from reading various books you get something that's called knowledge from reading the books you get knowledge from by birth you get wisdom wisdom is god given gift okay and knowledge is you know you acquire by reading various books studying various courses and all that you know the difference between wisdom and knowledge so here wisdom is what it's an abstract now you cannot see with your naked eyes you can only visualize that you can only think of okay Think of that, right. And here, the wisdom you should not say. What should you say? Wisdom is the gift of heaven. Okay, so it is used in the general sense. And here, the government is trying to eradicate the poverty from the country. You cannot say the poverty. You are talking about this poverty in, gender, in a general sense. The power, you are ta talking about this poverty, this is an abstract noun and you are talking about this abstract noun in a general sense, then you should not use any article before that. The government trying to eradicate poverty from the country and here the honesty is the best policy. Honesty, you cannot say the honesty, you cannot say honesty means nijayati. Okay, the honesty you cannot say, it's an abstract noun. It is used in a general sense. Therefore, you cannot use any article before that. You have to see honesty is the best policy. Right. One more example is given. The virtue has its own reward. Virtue. Virtue means a good quality. A good quality is called a virtue. Okay. Right. Helping others is a virtue. Showing kindness towards others is a virtue. Virtues are there. So, this is used, this is an abstract noun, used in a wider sense and therefore you should not use any article before that. You have to simply say, virtue has its own reward, right. And last example here is, the common sense is a great virtue. Common sense, common sense means, one should have common sense. What is common sense? Can you show what common sense is? You cannot say that. Can you say, common sense is in this shape or common sense is in this shape? Can you say that? You cannot see with your naked eyes. You can only think of it. You can only visualize that. That's all. So, common sense. So, it's an abstract noun used in a wider sense. But therefore, you should not use any article before that. And here, you have to say, common sense is a great virtue. So, in this way, before these abstract nouns, we should not use. When used in a wider sense, we should not use any article. This rule you have learned here. And now, let's move on to learn the next important rule. Exception is there to this rule. What is that? But whenever we wish to particularize them, Whenever we wish to particularize those abstract nouns, what should we say? We can use the before them. Okay. How? Let us see that. The wisdom of Solomon. You are talking uh, about uh, the special wisdom of this Solomon. You are not talking about wisdom in a general sense, but you are talking about the particular wisdom of this person. The wisdom of Solomon. Here you are talking only about the wisdom of Solomon. You are not talking about wisdom in a general sense, in a wider sense. And that's why when that is the case, you can use the definite article before this. You can use this. You can say the wisdom of Solomon was great. Similarly, everybody praised the bravery of Gopal. Here, bravery is what? Dhairiyam. What is that? It's an abstract noun. So, here you are not talking about this bravery in, in general or in a general sense, but you are talking about uh, uh, the particular bravery of this person. So, the, you are talking about the bravery of Gopal. That's why you can use this definite article before that. The bravery of Gopal is praiseworthy, appreciable, something like that. Okay. I can't forget the kindness of my friend. You are talking about the kindness. Kindness is what? An abstract noun? Daya. So, you are not talking about this kindness in a general sense, but you are talking about the kindness of your friend and therefore, you can use the definite article before that. I can't forget the kindness of my friend showed towards me and here everybody likes the, the honesty of Mohan. So, you are not talking about honesty in a wider sense or in a general sense, but the honesty of this particular person then you can use the definite article before that. So, one more example is given here, the patience of Sheila. You are talking about uh, the patience of Sheila. You are not talking about uh, this patience in a general sense, but you are talking about this patience of Sheila. So, you are particularizing this patience. 
the subtract noun. So, here you can use the definite article. And here one more example is given here. The common sense shown by Rakesh is amazing. So, you are talking about uh, common sense of this Rakesh. You are not talking uh, about this common sense in a general sense. Okay? In all these examples, you find that uh, these abstract nouns, wisdom, bravery, kindness, honesty, patience, common sense, these are all the abstract nouns. They are not uh, spoken of in a wider sense, uh, but they are just uh, uh, spoken of uh, particularly. Those abstract nouns are particularized. They are spoken of particularly. That's why whenever the abstract nouns are used uh, to, you know, in a particular way, then you can use. In a general way, don't use any article. In a particular way, you can use uh, uh, the definite article. Okay. Now, let's move on to learn the next thing. Fifth one, before the plural countable nouns used in a wider and uh, general sense. Before the plural countable nouns used in a wider and general sense. Before the plural countable nouns, whenever they are used in a general sense, okay, then you should not use any article before them. For example, their children like chocolates. The children like chocolate. It's a general. You are talking about uh, the children in a uh, general sense. Okay, you are mentioning them in a general way. Children like chocolates. That itself is. Then why using this definite article? When that is the case, you, you should not use any article before that. Okay, children like chocolates. It, it, it has become universal. It has become universal. Not only these children, those children, but uh, children all over the world uh, like chocolates. It has become a universal truth. Right, children like chocolates. And here the computers are used in many offices. See why saying the computers? You cannot say that because you are talking about these computers in a general sense. Then you have to say computers are used in many offices nowadays. Right, the books are man's best friend. So here you are talking, not talking about the particular books, but you are talking about the books in a general sense. Then you should not use any article. You are talking about the books in a general sense. Books are man's companions. Companions means friends. Okay, right. You have to say books are man's best companions. That's enough. Okay, and here the birds fly in the sky. Don't say the birds. They are used. Birds are used in a general sense. Then not necessary. You cannot say the birds. But you simply say birds fly in the sky. So in this way. Before these are all plural nouns, okay. Before the plural nouns used in a general or wider sense, you should not use any article before them, right? And uh, now let's move on to learn the next one. Exception is there to this rule. What is that? But uh, such nouns take the when we particularize them, whenever we particularize them, whenever we talk about them particularly, then you can use uh, the definite article, right? How, where are the children? So, here, here you are not talking about the children in a general sense. You are talking about your children only. Hey, where are the children means the children of you. Your children. So, here you are talking about them particularly. These are the particular children of your family. So the books he has bought today are very useful for all competitive exams. The books. Here, you are talking about the particular books. What kind of books? He has bought today. The books he has bought today. You are talking about the books you have bought today and not the books in a general sense. Okay. That's why you can use that. Okay. Uh, he hacked the software of all the computers in the office. You are talking about the computers of your office. Not the computers of all over the world, but only the uh, computers of your office. That means you are talking about uh, these uh, computers particularly. You are particularizing them. You are particularizing these books. You are particularizing these uh, children. That's why. Then you can use the definite article. And uh, bird, the birds kept in the cage were brought from Africa. So you are talking about uh, uh, these birds particularly. These are you are particularizing these birds. How they are. But the birds kept in the cage were brought from Africa. They were brought from. You are not talking about the birds in a general sense, but you are talking about the birds that are brought that were brought from Africa. So here, then you can use the definite article. And uh, one more example is given here. The students debarred from the college 
were not allowed to take the exam. So, you are not talking about the students in a general sense, but you are talking about them particularly, you are particularizing them, then you can use the definite article. Okay, and one more example is given here. The frequency of the buses in this route is very long. Okay, you are talking about the buses, okay, not uh, uh, in a general sense, but uh, you are talking about the buses that ply in this route, that move here and there in this route. You are talking about these buses, you are particularizing these buses, then you can use the definite article. In this way, whenever you happen to particularize the plural countable nouns you can use the definite article okay otherwise you should not use any article before these plural countable nouns okay now let's move on to learn the next rule sixth one before the nouns man and woman when used in a wider sense man and woman when used in a wider sense okay broad sense in a broader sense or wider sense whatever you can say right the man is a social animal here the man means that is wrong you are using this man uh, in a broader sense in a wider sense if you if suppose uh, you, if you take the meaning of this sentence the man is a social animal means actually da means uh, particular that is the meaning da man means that particular man that is the meaning so what is the meaning of this uh, sentence then the man is a social animal means that particular man is a social animal but then what about this man this man this man are they not uh, social animals so that's why if you take the meaning in that way, it looks very absurd. Ah, manishi oka sangha jivaite, ee manishi gada, ee manishi gada, ee manishi gada, ee manishi gada. So then you cannot say ah, manishi, the man you cannot say. You have to see because you know here you are using this man in a wider sense. Then you have to say man is a social animal. Manavudu. Here man, manishi. So here, you know, use the word manavudu in Telugu, manavudu, oka sangha jivi, something like that, all right. And uh, here, the woman is called man's mate. Here, you are talking about this woman, okay, in a wider sense, the woman is called man's mate. Wherever the woman may be, she is the man's mate, okay, she is called man's mate. So that's why here, you are using man in a wider sense, woman in a wider sense, then you should not use any article before that. Woman is called the man's mate, right. And next one, the woman is more sensitive than a man, okay. Here again, woman is used in a wider sense. So woman is more sensitive. She is more delicate. She is more sensitive than man, all right. So you cannot say that. I mean, the woman is more sensitive than man. And one more example, the man is destined to work for a woman. So man is there. Again, you are using this man in a wider sense. Man is destined, manavudu, sri kosamu, kastapadal sindhi, akaduna, wherever he may be, whoever you are, man, if you are a man, you must work for a woman, that is there. Okay, he is destined to work for a woman. So, that is why it is used here in a general sense and that is why man is destined to work for a for woman, right. Now, we can use a before them when used in the general sense. Whenever you use man and woman in a general sense, uh, then you can use that, okay. As here, uh, she is a good woman, I am a three. You are using, you know, you, you are just, you know, using this woman in a general way. She is a good woman. She is a good lady. Okay. Right. She is a good woman. And he is a great man. Man is used. Woman is used in a general sense. So, here in a wider sense. See, wider sense is different from general sense. So, he is a great man. And with this, you know, uh, this rule comes to an end and now let's move on to learn the next rule. Seventh one, before predicative nouns indicating a unique position, that is a position that is normally held at one time by one person only, a predicative noun, predicative noun means a noun used after, okay, a noun used, noun used after a verb. So that is called a, a predicative noun, a noun used after a verb is called a predicative noun. So, uh, before that predicative noun, we should not use any article, right. So, here one example is given. C. P. Radhakrishnan was appointed the governor of Telangana. So, here C. P. Radhakrishnan was appointed. So, uh, this is a verb. 
So noun is occurring. Governor of Telangana is a noun. So before that, this definite article is not necessary. This article is not necessary there. CP Radha Krishnan was appointed governor of Telangana. That itself is enough. Of course, you might think this sentence is absolutely correct, but uh, as per uh, grammatical rules, uh, that is wrong. So you have to say CP Radha Krishnan was appointed governor of Telangana. So this is called uh, predicative noun, right? So one more example is given here. Mr. Ram Gopal became the principal of the college in 1995. So here Ram Gopal became this is a verb and here what is that? The principal of the college is a noun, right? It's a noun. So before that you should not use it. It's called a predicative noun. So here you should not use any article before that. Mr. Ram Gopal became what? Principal of the college in 1995. That itself is enough. And one more example is given. Mahesh was elected the chairman of the board. Don't say the chairman of the board. You should not say that because elected is a verb and here this is a predicative noun and therefore chairman of the board is a predicative noun. So here before that you should not use any article. Then therefore you have to say Mahesh was elected chairman of the board. So in this way before the predicative nouns okay you should not use any article. This rule you have learned from this uh, slide and now let us move on to learn the next rule. Eighth one before the word nature when it means the outer world this is very important. Whenever nature means the outer world outer world means in Telugu prakruti Whenever this nature is used in this sense, you should not use any article before that. Okay. Here, here very simple. What is that? Our ancestors used to worship the nature. Ancestors means Purvikulu. Mana Purvikulu Prakrutini Aradin Chevar. So here, nature. You cannot say the nature. That's why you have to say, uh, what, is, what is that? Our ancestors used to worship nature. Right. And one more example is given. Rainbow is a beautiful sight in the nature. You cannot say in the nature because rainbow is a beautiful sight in nature. Prakriti loka andamena drushya. Here this nature is used in the sense of prakriti, the outer world. Right. Then you cannot say uh, the nature. Rainbow is a beautiful sight in nature. Right. And here uh, note, one note is there. But nature in the sense of temperament. Nature has another meaning. Nature means temperament, swabhavamu. But nature manchidi gadra. Nature. Nature has one meaning, prakriti. Nature has another meaning, swabhavamu. Temperament. Takes an article. Then you can use an article before that. Okay. Here you see that. He has a kind nature. Atulaka dayagala swabhavamunu kaligi unnadu. Right. So everybody likes him. That is there. So here it is not prakriti. It is only swabhavu. She has a selfish nature. Okay. A. You can use any article, A and D, according to the need, according to our need. He has, she has a selfish nature, so nobody likes her, right? And here one more example is there, I think. All her friends estranged her because of her arrogant nature. All her friends estranged her because of her arrogant nature. Ameka ahambhavapu swabhavam valla. So, something like that. So, here in this example, I have not used any article because it cannot be used any, any article cannot be used here. Right. The sentence structure is like that. Okay. Here, but on the whole, you have learned from these examples that uh, uh, nature has got uh, two meanings. One meaning, the outer world, prakriti. The other meaning, temperament, sabhavamo. Whenever uh, this uh, nature is used in the sense of uh, uh, the outer world, you cannot use any article before that. But whenever you use that uh, nature in the sense of temperament, swabhavamu, you can use any article according to your need. Okay, right. Now let's move on to learn other things. Now, ninth rule is there. This is going to be a very important one. Before the titles used in opposition to a proper noun. Please uh, un try to understand the rule clearly. Okay, don't get confused. Okay, before the titles used in opposition uh, to a proper noun uh, or before the predicative nouns are the complement of the subject. Okay, predicative nouns means I have already told you about this. Predicate noun means nouns that occur after a verb is called a predicative noun or the complement of the subject. 
the predicative noun can also be called the complement of the uh, subject. So, before this predicative noun or the complement of the subject, you should not use any article. And before the titles used in uh, used in opposition to a proper noun, you should not use any article. So here in this rule, you can find two things. Okay, two things are there. I'll just give you. So here, Solomon. Okay, it's a it's a proper noun. Son of David. It's a title. Solomon, son of David. Don't say the son of David. Some people say Ramesh, the son of Rakesh. Something like that they say that. But whenever this is a proper noun, so this is a title given to this Solomon. Solomon, son of David. Don't say the son of David. So it's a title. Solomon, son of David, was the wisest of all monarchs, right? And one more example is given Ramya, daughter of Chaudhary. So here you cannot say the daughter of Chaudhary. Though this is in opposition to this. Ramya, who is Ramya? Daughter of Chaudhary. So this is explaining about this Ramya. This is explaining the, the this title is explaining about this man, this man. So Ramya, who is Ramya? Daughter of Chaudhary. Back at the first rank in the civil service. So this is called the title. This is the proper noun, right? And here, what is that? Amit Agarwal is chief executive officer of Amazon India. Okay, here Amit Agarwal. So here this is the verb. So here, chief executive officer of Amazon is a predicative noun. Okay, predicative noun occurs only after the verb. You know that very well. Chief executive officer of Amazon. This is all a noun. Okay, it's called a predicative noun or the complement of the subject. So before that, we should not use any article. Right. Elizabeth II became Queen of England after the death of her father. So here Elizabeth II became, you cannot say the Queen of England, you cannot say. Okay, you cannot say the Queen of England. You cannot say um, became this is a verb. It's a predicative noun. So no article is used before this one. Elizabeth II became Queen of England after the death of her father. And here examples are given. Okay, Rahul Gandhi. The son of Rajiv Gandhi has visited Hyderabad. So Rahul Gandhi, this is a proper noun. This is the title given to him. Who is Rahul Gandhi? Son of Ra Rajiv Gandhi. But you cannot use any article before that. Rahul Gandhi, son of Rajiv Gandhi itself is enough. Has visited Hyderabad. Right. And then therefore you say Rahul Gandhi, son of Rajiv Gandhi has visited Hyderabad. Right. One more example is given to make you understand this. Draupadi Murmu was elected the president of India. So here verb, this is a, elected is a verb. And here president of India is a predicative noun. So before that you should not use it. Draupadi Murv was elected president of India. That itself is a, so these, these rules are very important. Therefore, you must be very cautious. Draupadi Murv was elected president of India. Right. And now let's move on to learn the next rule. Tenth one, before the names of universities, when they begin with the name of the place. Whenever the name of the university begins with the name of the place, you should not use any article before that. For example, it's not like that. The Oxford University, Oxford is the name of the okay, place. You cannot say, the Oxford University, you can say. What should you say? The University of Oxford, you have to say that. The Cambridge University. The University of Cambridge, the Virginia University, the University of Virginia, the Hyderabad University, you cannot say the Hyderabad University, the University of Hyderabad, therefore UOH and uh, here in the examinations the sentence will be given like this, she post graduated from the Hyderabad University, from the Hyderabad University, you cannot say that because the name of this university is preceded by the name of the place, place. Whenever that is the case, you should not use any article. So, university is there. Before that, the name of the place is there. Therefore, you should not use the definite article before that. She post graduated from Hyderabad. University itself is enough. Or the University of Hyderabad, you can say. From Hyderabad, University is correct. Or the University of Hyderabad. The place must be after the name of the university. Okay, if, if it is, if this name is before the name of the university, you should not use, only after the university you can use. Okay, one more example is given here for your understanding sake. She studied in the Delhi University, no. She studied in Delhi University also, you can say. She studied in the University of Delhi, so like that. 
So please try to understand these things and now let's move on to learn the next thing. Eleventh one, before the names of relations like father, mother, aunt, uncle and also cook and nurse meaning our cook, our nurse. So when, when mentioning those relations, you, know, you should not use any uh, article. Okay, the father has returned from office. Okay, you cannot say that. You have simply say, you have to simply say, father has just returned. You cannot say the father has just returned. No. And similarly, the mother is in the, the mother is not at home. You cannot say the mother. Mother is not at home. That's all. So these are the relations. Before them, you should not use any article. And uh, one more example is given. The cook has given a notice. You cannot say the cook. The cook means our cook. So you cannot say the cook. You have to say cook has given uh, a notice. And one more example is given here. The uncle will help me in my homework. No, don't say the uncle. Okay, you simply say uncle will help me in my homework. So in this way, before the names of relations like father, mother, aunt, uncle, cook, nurse, before all of them. So of course, these are not the relation, but cook and nurse are also mentioned here, just like family doctor, family lawyer, something like that. So before these uh, two nouns and before these relations, we should not use any article, right? And now let's move on to learn the next rule. Twelfth one, a or an should not be used after kind of, sort of or type of okay this is going to be a very important one from all your competitive examinations point of view and here uh, what sort of a man are you sort of is there but after this a is used you cannot say sort of a man no you have to simply say what sort of man are you we manshivaya e rakamaina manshi means we am manshivi sometimes we am manshivaya Sometimes we say, em manshivi, that means, em rakamaina manshivi, elanti manshivi, something like that in Telugu. So, what sort of a man, you should not say, what sort of man are you, like that. So, next, what kind of a flower is it? You cannot say, what kind of a flower, wrong. You have to say, what kind of flower is it, that's all. Please keep this uh, very important rule in mind and uh, this is going to be very, very important uh, uh, in your examination, right. And here, what type of a mobile was it, type of, after Sata of kind of type of you should not use any article, right? You have to say what type of mobile was it. So in this way, before kind of, sort of, type of, we should not use a or an. Okay. If at all it is given, it is a wrong statement. Okay, right. And now let's move on to learn the next important rule. Thirteenth one is there. D is not used before home if it occurs after to be, to be means be farm, after be farm. At okay, to be pet at okay, after be farm plus at okay, that means be farm plus at after the in this pattern, uh, the uh, no, uh, uh, when this occurs after be plus be farm plus at, you should not use any article before that. After go, come, arrive, return, please keep these uh, important uh, verbs in your mind. This where uh, this rule is going to be very very important because most of the people try to use uh, the before this home okay don't use the before this home whenever this home occurs after be plus at okay and uh, after go after come after arrive after return you should not use the definite article okay right so here my father was at the home so be was means be farm at is there B farm at is there, then you cannot use the. So, my father was at home when I arrived. At the home, you cannot say that. Okay, my father was at home, right. All right. She returned to the home. After this return, return is there. After return to the, should not be. She returned to home. She returned home. Of course, even two is also not used. Before this, definite article is not used and two is also not used because it, it is used uh, in, in this case, you know, the word home is used as an adverb. So here, she returned home is there. Before this home, you should not use the definite article and also this two, right? You cannot say she returned to the home, wrong. She returned home is the right one, right? They did not go to the home yesterday. Please, you know, home is there and two, go home is there. You have to say they did not go home. Please remember, uh, after this, uh, before this uh, home, you should not use the preposition to one point. You should not use the definite article. Fourteenth one, the last but one rule, D is not used before the time expressions beginning with the last and the next. This is also going to be a very important one. What is this? Before the time expressions beginning with the last and next, you should not use the definite article. How? 
के रिपे द डायरेक्टर कम्स हियर द नेक्स्ट वीक सर टाइम एक्सप्रेशन इट इज प्रिसीडेड बाय द वर्ड नेक्स्ट सो देन यू कैनॉट यू कैनॉट से द नेक्स्ट वीक इट्स रॉन्ग द डायरेक्टर कम्स हियर नेक्स्ट वीक इट सेल्फ इज इनफ नेक्स्ट वीक राइट एंड हियर ही केम हियर द लास्ट नाइट नाइट इज ए टाइम एक्सप्रेशन बिफोर इट इज बिगिनिंग विथ लास्ट एंड बिफोर दैट you cannot use the definite article you have to say he came here last night the last night you should not say right i saw a beggar the last monday monday is a time expression it is beginning with the last so you should not use any article before that i saw a beggar last monday one more example is given here they will complete the project the next year year is a time expression it is beginning with the next before that you should not use any uh, definite article and you have to say Uh, they will complete the project next year so in this way before the time expressions beginning with last and next uh, you should not use the definite uh, article right now let's move on to learn the last rule 15th one d is not used before the names of festivals and holidays okay this is also a very important rule and a direct rule the christmas was celebrated very grandly in our colony don't say christmas is a festival before that you cannot say the christmas you cannot say you have to simply say christmas was celebrated very grandly in our colony another example i would like to give you here people illuminate their homes at the diwali no diwali is a festival therefore you have to say people illuminate their homes at diwali right with this this video comes to an end thank you so much for watching this video right dear tet and dsc candidates thank you so much for watching this video and uh, if at all you have any problem please uh, uh, text me uh, on my whatsapp number given in the description and uh, if you have any problem make use of the uh, comment section and uh, i am ready to answer all those questions in person and if at all if necessary i will call you and also talk to you over the phone please try to watch this video till the end with another beautiful video i shall be back to you until then bye see you all of you guys